in my first plea bargain. So yeah, thanks. So I have a 10 year suspended sentence for burglary on me already. I catch two more uh, that carry 20 years apiece. And so that's a total of 50. And I didn't even know that in Morgan County, I had another one for another 20. So really it was 70 years altogether. Uh, Bartholomew County, uh, first plea bargain was 30, second was 30, third was 30. I thought I was going to do 30 years in prison. This seemed to be my rock bottom, though. So do you think it was the time that you were facing, the combination no. of what just occurred a couple months prior, that, that moment of revelation in your life? being tired of running because they always say you know i'm sick and tired of being sick and tired do you think it was just like the perfect combination that brought you to their rock bottom or just that one particular thing of finally facing that much time i'm going to say it's probably every bit of that you know um it was an answered prayer for sure um but when i was in there facing that time and you know i used to think about what it was going to be like to see cassius at the age of 15. Uh, because of 30 to 15, that, I mean, it's a long time. Mm -hmm. And I realized he wasn't going to be a kid, he was going to be a grown man uh, the next time I seen him. And that really started to play, it's wanted to weigh heavy on me, you know? And I started thinking, you know, what, what, what could life be like if I didn't use, you know? Like, I was facing so much time that it was going to give me the time to at least try, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but that 30 years and the fact that I wasn't going to get to see my son was definitely my rock bottom. It was enough, and I do believe it was an answer prayer. So you're facing this time. You're at your rock bottom. You're at a surrendering point, but you're in jail. So how does going from surrendering to rock bottom and transitioning to getting sober and recovery, how does that path develop behind bars? And again, I think it's important to state that this is before things have actually evolved. Even now today in jails, there's a lot of recovery going on. Uh, in 2012, there was zero. Um, so the stories like this, right? So I go, I'm on the phone one night and I had a girlfriend at the time. She was the last person talking to me. And she proceeds to tell me that she's pregnant. And I remember thinking to myself, because I'm crazy at the time, well, that's cool, you know, I'll take care of it. That was a stupid thought anyways. And she said, uh, well, I don't think you understand, John. I do not believe it's yours. And usually I would get, I would act out in anger. I'd be real mad. I, I would have said a bunch of stuff that was stupid, whatever. But this time I just sat there and I was just breathing. And I was silent. And we get off the phone and I go up to the to, to my bunk. And it's a four, four bunk cell. I was the only one in there. And I had this thought, man, that you have two options, man. You can either just go out there and kill yourself. And it was a viable option well you gotta start fighting like there did i had no other choice and i chose to fight I, I don't know why i made that choice in that moment but i i decided i was going to try something i remember within the next day or two i can't give you an exact because i just don't remember but i was in a spot that had no resources so i had to develop my own recovery and i'd never recovered before so I had no clue what I was doing. Mm -hmm. All I knew, and you want to get back to honesty, is when I looked in the mirror, I hated everything I seen. All of it. All of it. What I looked like, what I stood for, who I was on the inside. And I was going to kill that dude. The first thing I did is I started trying to lose weight and get in shape. I, I, I mean... In there, it was like the only thing you had. And I knew I didn't like the way I looked. It was part of that hate. Like, when I tell you I looked in the mirror, I wanted it all to change. So I'd get down, and I'd start trying to do push-ups and stuff in front of 32 men that like to make fun of me for doing it. And I see it. You know, I, 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 I earned that. I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I didn't get upset about it. I remember thinking to myself as I was doing this, 
and people were laughing like I wouldn't make it. I remember thinking to myself, take responsibility. You know, you did this. No matter what it is, John Cunningham did it. You know, mm-hmm. radical. I'm talking radical responsibility. And over a month or two months, I think they finally started to realize I was being serious and I started getting a lot of respect. Right. Um, something else I started to do was I started to just read books. Any book I get my hands on. Um, because it's just something I'd never done before. And in there, it was something I figured that would be a part of recovery. You know, I didn't know. <laughs> All this stuff I didn't know. Um, and then something miraculous happened. Absolutely miraculous. You know, I'm doing all these things. I, I, I'm seeing the weight come off. I'm starting to like myself a little bit. I'm starting to see myself different than the addict. And I'm drinking coffee one morning. And back then, it's like this though. It's like this keefy coffee, and it's and it's instant. And you don't have hot water. It was like this lukewarm water. You mix it up, and you just pretend it's good coffee. Like you have to use your mind, you know. And I'm watching this country music television, and I had a feeling come over me that I hadn't had in so long. I was happy. I didn't think I'd ever be happy again. And it was real. And I'm still happy today. Like, that's why I don't quit. I can't believe I get to smile again. I remember thinking, wow. I'll never let go of this. Whatever it was I was doing, it was working and I was not going to quit. I still had all this time above me. All this stuff to still sort out. But I just didn't care. It was like the fears just died. I wasn't scared. I was free.